Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back. So for today's video, we're going to be doing a QA, and a which I haven't done in quite a while, so this is something fun and a little bit different. The channel did recently reach 5,000 subscribers, thanks to you guys, and as of time of filming, we're actually at 5,300, so like, my 5,000 sub Q&A is a little bit late. Um, I'm trying my best. There was other stuff happening that I had to get out first, but really and sincerely, I know I've said it a thousand times at this point, but thank you again for the support and the growth and the love. It just really means a lot today. So I asked you guys on Instagram, TikTok, and obviously here on YouTube to ask me questions, anything that you wanted to, whether it be about me or dolls or whatever. And we we're just going to go through those questions and answer them today. Kind of like a nice chill vibes video. Definitely a lot calmer than the last video that I posted about the Monster High membership. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. Okay, the first question is, any advice for new collectors? I don't live in the US, so I do most of my shopping online. Uh, I do live in the US, so I am not good at giving like advice specific to international collecting, because I know that there's a whole lot of other different issues there, from the conversion rates making dolls really expensive, to some dolls only being available in America, so the shipping is ridiculous. So I don't know how helpful I'm going to be on that point, I am really, really sorry. Online in general, though, I would say definitely watch reviews before you buy things if you're going to be buying online and that is not just because I make reviews I promise just because if you go into a store and you have that as an option and you can actually look at dolls you can kind of pick out the ones that have the best face or that you can't see any defects in the box but obviously if you're ordering online you don't have that capability so you're kind of just taking like a lottery and hoping that you get a good one so I would say definitely watch reviews first just so that you can know whether a particular doll or line has a lot of defects perfect example is Rainbow High Series 4 those had terrible defects for like the first rollout of them I think they might have gotten a little bit better as they continued to produce those dolls but the first rollout had really really bad defects so if you want those dolls but you see that maybe wait if you're planning on buying online and then buy them later once like some improvements been made just to be kind of more aware of when you're shopping online and then in general my big like number one advice tip to anyone who is entering the doll collecting hobby is try to be patient and try to take care of yourself I think it is so easy I've talked about this a few times on this channel I think it is so easy to fall into FOMO and have a severe fear of missing out when it comes to doll collecting because there are so many releases and so many people posting online who have very large collections that they've built up over years but like you see it and it's like wow I want to have that and the biggest thing I can say is just be patient with yourself you know it does take a long time to collect a large number of dolls if you're being like smart and like buying things that make you happy so just take it one day at a time you know have dolls that you like and when you can buy those great do it make yourself feel joy but don't feel too overwhelmed you know try to take a step back if you start to feel overwhelmed and don't feel like you have to immediately jump into this hobby and be someone who has a hundred plus dolls because that's just not how it happens so basically just take care of your mental health when doll collecting <laughs> that's like a good tip for anything um, but I feel like doll collecting really can get into your head in some ways especially when you add like the internet on top of that so just try to take care of yourself be patient with yourself your collection will build up and you're gonna love it the whole process is very fun but like just be kind to yourself <laughs> Okay, next one was, what's your fave musician? And this is a very hard one for me. I don't have time to get into it here because I don't want this video to be like an hour long. I listen to music in a really weird way. I feel like there are very few musicians that I tend to like all of their discography or even most of their discography. I don't even have particular genres that I feel super strongly about. I really like music on a song by song basis. That being said, the number one example of a musician that I like most of their discography is Melanie Martinez. Part of that might just be because she does have a new album that is going to be coming out, so like, she's kind of at the forefront of my mind. But historically, I have liked a lot of her music, so that's the only one I can really think of. Genuinely, pretty much every other song that I listen to, it's like a one-off. Like, I don't typically listen to artists specifically. Like, I just listen to individual songs. I hope that makes sense. I've been told that the way that I listen to music and my taste is very weird, so I don't know, but I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Okay, next up we have what other types of themed dolls would you like? I still would like a mermaid doll that I feel like is done well. <laughs> I feel like every time there's like a dedicated mermaid doll line, there's just something about it that I don't like. So I'm still waiting for the day that we get like a mermaid themed line of dolls that is just perfect. Uh, and then fairies. I'm, I'm obviously 
in love with fairies. I am currently making my own little set of custom fairies, but I would love to see a fairy themed doll line. I know there are like Winx Clubs dolls. Those are kind of the closest thing I can think of, but I don't know, maybe associated not with an already existing property. Like if you don't watch the cartoon, the dolls might not mean as much to you. So just kind of a generic fairy doll line would be really cool. Or just like mystical creatures in general, kind of like Monster High, but less of the monster aspect and more of just like the folklore, like a folklore themed line would be really, really cool. I don't know, I'm just saying. Okay, this is a hard one. What's your favorite and least favorite Rainbow High slash Shadow High dolls? Least favorite is very easy, it's River. Um, I know that he's like easy to pick on, so I'm sorry, but I just think that he was the first boy doll from Rainbow High or Shadow High, and it was not a good introduction. I still think he's probably the ugliest doll that the brand has ever put out. Favorite is a lot harder though. Like I'm looking around and I'm trying to think. Oh my gosh. I feel like I still have to say that based on quality and the items that she comes with alone, Lily Chang is definitely up there. In terms of like a more personal bond. For some reason, I really, really love Mara Pinkett from Shadow High. I don't know why. I just, my eye is always drawn to that doll. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. I also really liked Kaya Hart. I feel like that's not necessarily the most popular opinion. She's kind of an older doll now, so like not the most recent or most popular, but I did really love Kaya. It's so hard to pick. I'm sorry. I know that's such a cop-out, but I feel like I really can't pick <laughs> just one favorite. But those are probably my top three at this moment. It changes all the time, but right now those are probably my top three. Okay, then we have, has doing YouTube changed how you collect dolls? And the answer is yes. Um, I mean, I started doing YouTube because I started collecting Rainbow High dolls. So for me at this point, the two kind of go hand in hand. <laughs> like I can't really separate how I collect from YouTube. I think that the biggest thing is that doing YouTube has made me more willing to branch out. When I first started collecting, it was only Monster High dolls. Like I would not buy any other kind of doll. I was very solely focused on Monster High and now there are a lot of other brands that I collect and I'm more open to trying different brands. Like I might buy one of a brand and if I don't like it, I don't like it. But like I'm more open to giving them a try. I think that that's the number one way that my collecting has changed. It's just kind of being a little bit less laser focused and being more of a broad collector. I also buy a lot more. Um, I think just because, it's not even because I'm doing like reviews because I feel like most of my content isn't necessarily reviews, but it is because I think I'm a lot more aware of more dolls coming out because I'm online in the doll space, making videos and watching videos and interacting on Instagram and stuff like that. So I think I buy a lot more not because I make videos specifically, but because being in the online doll community, I'm so much more aware of how many dolls there are that are coming out. And so it has kind of upticked <laughs> my amount of dolls that I collect. Next up I have, do you like stuffed animals? And the short answer is yes. I was definitely that kid who always had like piles and piles of stuffed animals on their bed. And as I've grown up, there have been several times where I've kind of done purges where I've said, you know, I need to donate these and let someone else enjoy them because they'll like them more than I do right now. And inevitably, whether it's a month later or a year later, I end up buying more stuffed animals I don't know why, I just, I can't be controlled, I guess. Like, there's just something about them that makes me want to buy them. Currently, it is Squishmallows. I do have a lot of them packed away because at some point we're going to get to move, hopefully. Um, but I do have a larger amount of Squishmallows than I would like to admit to. And maybe when I do get to move and I do unpack those, I'll do a little silly collection video. Let me know if you guys would be interested in that because I know it's not dolls. But, I don't know, it could be kind of fun. Okay, then I actually got a couple questions like this. If it's not too personal, were you nervous to come out to your husband about transitioning? Follow up, how does it feel to now be yourself? Uh, the short answer is yes. It was really nerve-wracking. It was a lot more of a slow process rather than a, hey babe, guess what, one day. Um, basically, it was just something where I came to him and was like, listen, I have been thinking about this and kind of feeling this, and I don't know what's going on because it basically started with me just questioning my gender in general, not really a super surefire feeling that I was a man. So it was kind of more open-ended at first and it was scary to approach him because it's a sensitive topic, you know, and it wasn't like I thought that he was going to be like really rude or hateful towards me or like bigoted because he's not like that. Um, but it's a sensitive topic to bring up. So it was scary, but it was a lot more gradual, kind of more just let's try 
you know, some different pronouns. Let's try to change things a little bit at a time and see how it feels. And I think that that helped. Like, it definitely wasn't easy. I don't want to try to sugarcoat it or try to pretend like it's super simple because it was a stressful time and kind of a difficult time just because there were a lot of adjustments that both of us were making. And so we kind of had to get used to a new dynamic. I think it helped that at my core, I'm still the same. Like, my personality is still the same. I still like the same things. So I think that that helped a lot. Um, but it was a little bit scary. We got through it though, and obviously we are happy together now, which is lovely. And as for how I feel about myself, it is definitely better. It feels nice to be open and be like hiding less, because um, I definitely was hiding my own gender from myself. Um, so even just admitting it to myself felt really nice, and then admitting it to people around me felt really good to be able to just get it out, and it's like, whether or not you can deal with it, at least it's out there, and I do feel a lot more confident in myself now. So the road is not always easy, and I do want to say I probably had a much smoother transition socially than a lot of people do, and I am very well aware that I had a much easier time than a lot of people do. Uh, for me, it was very well worth it, and so even though there were, you know, some like bumps along the line and it wasn't like perfectly smooth sailing, it did turn out good for everybody in the end. Alrighty, is there a specific reason you don't consume doll media and do you ever feel like you're missing out within the doll community because of it? Uh, I don't watch doll media, like I don't watch the shows or movies or anything. Not out of choice, I just haven't really loved it. When I was a teenager collecting Monster High, I was not very internet savvy or <laughs> like any kind of media savvy at all. So frankly, I didn't even know how to watch the webisodes, um, which sounds weird to admit, but like I, I genuinely didn't know how to watch the episodes and then I didn't buy the movies. So I just never got into it when I was younger. And now I do know how to access those things, but I just haven't really decided to. I tried to watch the Rainbow High show and I really disliked it. I got like two or three episodes in and I just didn't like it. Um, so I am open to consuming doll media. I just haven't found any that really catches my eye. I have been thinking about going back and watching the old Monster High show and then also the new one. I just kind of feel like I should watch the old one first, you know? And then also Ever After High. I've heard that that was an amazing show, so I've thought about watching that. Um, but yeah, mostly it's just that I either wasn't exposed to it at the right time or that I just don't care for it. I do definitely feel like I'm missing out within the doll community though for not watching it because everyone watches these shows. It seems like I feel like everyone watches these and I'm just like, yeah, I don't care. And <laughs> I don't know, it just, it does feel kind of weird because I feel like almost a little bit less of a collector because of it, at least within like the online space because I feel like I do have to disclaim, hey, I haven't seen this show because it's so normal for people to watch them. And that's fine. Like if you watch it, enjoy it. That is absolutely no shade at you. But it does make me feel like a little bit other sometimes. Um, it's nothing I can do about that. Like if I don't like it, I don't like it. So <laughs> what has been the most rewarding part of collecting for you? This is going to sound super cheesy, but it is definitely the community here on the channel. And I know that that's like the answer that like you quote unquote have to give. Like I know that that's expected, but I do mean that so genuinely. I love doll collecting for the fact of doll collecting, but I didn't do it for years and I was fine, you know. I get so much joy, like such unbelievable amounts of joy when I get to sit down and film a video and I love the editing process and then when I finally get to post it and it goes up and you guys get to watch it and tell me what you think and I get to talk with you in the comments, it is like next level excitement. Like it is so much better than just doll collecting by myself. I I really do genuinely mean that. So I don't know if that feels kind of like a cop out, um, but I think I would like doll collecting even if I wasn't doing YouTube. I don't think it would be anywhere near as fun. I am constantly thinking about more ideas for videos and more things that I can put out and questions that I can ask you guys to get your opinions on. Like I, I love this channel and I love the community we have here so much. So that's that's the short answer is I just I love having this channel and having the ability to talk with you guys. Once you finish your fairy series are there any custom dolls that you have planned? Uh, so many. <laughs> just an unreasonable amount honestly. I am always amazed 
by dedicated custom doll channels and the amount of dolls that they can produce. Like, it is baffling to me how fast these artists are. I am so amazed because I just can't do that. I feel like it takes me so long to get even one doll done. It's taking me forever to get through my fairy series, but I literally have a whole list in my phone of different dolls that I want to make. Let me, let me pull it up real quick so we can just go over a few with you. Okay, I have a few ideas for fairies that aren't within the, like, rainbow fairy series. I want to make a dandelion fairy because I just feel like that would be super cute. I actually already have a sketch for a like star slash night sky themed fairy. I would love to make a firefly fairy. Um, beyond that I'd like to make a bat themed doll because I feel like bats are super cute with like the little noses and the ears. I like bats a lot so I feel like it'd be really cool to make a bat doll. I would like to make some dragon dolls. I think that that would be really really cool. I want to make a salamander. I have thought about doing evolutions, much like delightful and just seeing like what my interpretation of that would be there are so many like there are so many dolls that i would like to do so they're gonna keep coming <laughs> the pace is definitely a little slower than like a dedicated custom doll channel um but yeah i have literally endless ideas for custom dolls so there's always gonna be something happening <laughs> all right if you could bring back an entire doll line exactly as it was which you initially missed out on which line would it be they gave the example of legacy day from ever after high um so i'm immediately gonna say dawn of the dance from monster high just because i i love that laguna so much i've talked about that a lot here on this channel i will never stop loving that laguna and i desperately wish that i had purchased her or i'd been collecting when she was out rather uh that's the first one that comes to mind beyond that some of you guys might know depending on the videos of mine that you decide to watch i have been collecting recently the dolls of the world princess edition barbies and those are like s tier perfect doll i love those so much and i'm buying them secondhand now so it's not so much that i missed out on them i guess the same could be said for donna the dance because i bought the claudine from them but if i could like walk into a store and see reproductions of the Dolls of the World Princess Editions, I would lose my mind. Like, I really wish I had been able to buy those first when they came out, because uh, it's just easier than, like, hunting around for a good secondhand price, right? But those are the first two lines that pop into my head. Okay, if you had unlimited money and or space, what other collection would you like to start or maintain again? Uh, so many. I am a collector at heart. Uh, first one, Legos. I already have a decent amount of Legos. I love building them. There's something about it that is just so relaxing for me. It's so fun to just like kind of zone out and then by the time you come back into it you have this massive creation. It's just so fun and so amazing but they're very expensive and they do take up space so like if those two things weren't issues I would have so many more Legos. I also weirdly have always been obsessed with Venetian masks. I think that the artistry is just so beautiful. Um, for a long time I was actually really upset because I have glasses and I just can't really do contacts because I have allergies and they always go to my eyes so like my eyes are always itchy and contacts just don't work. Um, but I can't wear masks with glasses and for a while I don't know why because like it's not like I need to wear masks in my daily life or at least like the eye mask like obviously face mask different situation in the past few years. Um, but yeah like the Venetian masks. You can't wear those super well with glasses, but I've always thought that they're just so beautiful and the artistry is just so amazing. Um, anime figures, literally, I would collect so many things. Like, I just, I like to have things. <laughs> I'm very much a material person in that regard. Um, so gosh, if I had endless money, that'd be dangerous. I'd have like dedicated rooms for different collections. <laughs> All right, if you could only keep one doll that you currently own, which would it be and why? Um, I'm gonna give two answers to this because my first one is a cop-out. My first one is the old collector, Draculaura. I'll pop a picture on screen because I don't think she's in frame. Um, <laughs> the reason for her, she's a beautiful doll by herself, like don't get me wrong, I love her. But it's so hard to just pick one doll right from this whole collection that I have. Like there's so many that mean a lot to me. So if I had to pick one and I was allowed to use any reason, even if it's kind of like a cop-out reason, I would pick that one because I would then resell her or trade her so that I could keep more dolls. Like, you know, if that makes sense, like I would sell her so that I could then buy back other dolls so I could keep like five instead of just keeping one. Um, but if you want like an actual answer, I'm looking around real quick. I'm like trying to, trying to think about which ones I would want to keep the most. I feel like it would have to be the original Spectre Vondergeist. And I know that she's not like the most difficult to get a hold of like she is available on the secondhand market but if i'm not using my cop-out uh answer 
that doll was the reason that I started collecting dolls at all. Venus was my first doll that I ever bought because uh, by the time I wanted to buy Spectre, she actually wasn't available in stores. But that doll was the whole reason that I have everything behind me and everything on my other shelves and the whole reason that dolls entered my life at all as, you know, like a teenager or an adult. So even though I could get another one of her. I feel like having the specific one that I have means so much and I would never want to get rid of her because there's just so much sentimental value in the fact that she launched my whole collection and my whole passion for this hobby. So it would feel wrong to get rid of her. Okay, how's your experience with being a queer collector in the doll community? Is it more or less accepting than other hobbies? Also, what's your most prized doll possession? Um, honestly, I feel like maybe I just am in like a good little bubble of the internet because I know that you guys are lovely people and I feel like a lot of people that I interact with online are lovely people but I feel like coming out literally didn't make any difference at all. Like I feel like whether I was straight, cis, bi, trans, it doesn't matter. I feel like my little bubble of like the tall community, my little like portion of the internet that I go on to, literally could not care less. Like everyone was so kind when I came out as trans and I feel like I've had very, very few interactions within the doll community about someone being like transphobic or homophobic or anything like that. So I could be biased in the sense that I could just have had really good luck, but it seems to me that the doll community is quite an accepting um, community in that regards. Obviously there's always going to be some bad apples in there. Like every community has some people that are just like less nice than others. Um, but for the most part, I would say that the doll collecting community is very, very accepting. I think part of it is because there is, like, also a societal judgment for being an adult who collects dolls. So, like, if you are someone that society is looking down upon, it's weird for you to look down upon other people who, for different reasons, are in the same sort of boat as you, if that makes sense. So I feel like that leads to a little bit more acceptance in the doll community, which is super lovely. And as far as my most prized doll possession, I keep looking around. This whole video is just me looking around. Is it cheesy if I say a doll that I made? <laughs> I don't know if she's in frame, but I have a doll. Here, I'll just pull her out. I have this doll here. I showed her off before, I think. This is the first custom doll I ever made as a teenager. I didn't make the dress um, or the hair. <laughs> like it's a wig that I bought online, but I painted her face and I made her accessories and I bought the dress online from someone on Etsy. I can't remember at this point. It's been a very long time, but I think she's like one of my most prized doll possessions. Again, it's really hard to pick just one, but she's the first custom I ever did. And I feel like she looks pretty good for like a first try ever. So, like, I talked about Spectra, and obviously Spectra is also one of my prized possessions for being the first, like, doll that I wanted so badly that I actually went out and did end up buying her. But this launched kind of a different side of the doll collecting love for me, and this launched kind of my love for customs. So she's also very, very special to me for a different reason. Are you a fan of mythology? If so, which mythical creatures do you prefer? I am a huge fan of mythology. Um, I was one of those kids who was obsessed with Greek mythology and like knew all about it. I love Egyptian mythology. There's just something very fascinating to me about different belief systems and different like thought processes that I really, really love and especially folklore and like creatures. It's just super interesting. Uh, fairies, number one, mermaids. I like dragons. I like anything. Like honestly, any like fantastical creature, I feel like there's something to love about it. I know that's a cop-out answer. I know it's not picking my favorite. If I had to pick a favorite, probably mermaids. Um, but I really think there's just something so interesting about all of them. What do you do in your free time? I'm assuming this means not when I'm thinking about dolls, which is a lot of the time. <laughs> but I feel like I have too many hobbies. Um, I love to draw and paint and all of that stuff. I like being artistic. I like to read a whole lot. I used to love to crochet. I would love to be able to crochet again. It's been a while since I've like had to talk about it on this channel, but I have had troubles with carpal tunnel in like the past six months. Um, so I haven't crocheted in a while just because I've been nervous to kind of irritate my wrist, but I would love to be able to get back into it because that was a super, super fun hobby. I like to cook. I hang out with my cats. I hang out with my family. I hang out with my friends. Like, I don't know. I like a lot of things. I feel like I never know what to say when people ask that kind of thing because my mind just goes blank. I'm like, I don't know. I exist. <laughs> like, I just do normal things, I guess. Uh, do you have any siblings or are you an only child? I'm actually one out of five siblings and they're all boys. <laughs> so it was funny before I 
came out because I was one of five kids and I was the only girl and now I'm not and so it's like a funny joke to me that the only girl that my parents had turned out to not be a girl. <laughs> uh, cats are dogs, cats always. I like dogs, I get it, like I'm sorry dog people. I've always been a cat person from the moment that I was born. I have literally always had a cat in my life. My parents had cats when I was kids and then when I was an adult and moved out I had cats of my own. My cats mean so much to me and like I've talked about that here before. I love my cats literally like they are my children. I actually can't resist uh, introducing the cat children in question. So this is Reese. She is about six years old now and she's super tiny. She only weighs like six or seven pounds. I love her dearly. And then this is our second fur baby, Alice in Chains. We call her Alice for short. She is about three years old and she's a lot bigger. She's like 14 pounds. She's a chunky cat. I literally love them both so much. I live for those cats. Like I would die for those cats always cats. <laughs> That's actually a good time to bring up though. I was gonna do this at the beginning and I forgot. I keep forgetting. Um, but if you've been on the channel for a while, you might know, or if you're newer here, this might be the first time you're hearing, but I do have links in my description of every single video for Tabby Tales Cat Rescue. I'm not affiliated with them. They don't know that I'm promoting them. I'm not getting anything for it. They're just a cat rescue that I feel like is doing really, really good stuff. And so since you were asking about cats, it made me think of them. Um, so yeah, I always have links in the description down below for their website and their social media if you want to support them there, or like their Amazon wish list if you can buy something to like help feed the animals or something. Um, definitely don't feel pressured to, but if you want to do something to kind of support someone else or if you want to donate to a charity, that's my number one to recommend because I just feel like they're doing really, really good stuff. So I'd like to include the links in all of my videos just in case, you know, just in case someone has a few extra dollars that they can spare to send to a good cause. All right, doll collection tour, which are your holy grail dolls and would love to know more about yourself and favorite doll line or doll. Okay, first of all, doll collection tour. I have said this in a few comments, um, so this is a great time to be able to address it in like a wider space. I promise it's going to be coming. I alluded to it earlier. Me and my husband were supposed to move into a house like last August. I was prepared, I was ready. We were supposed to have it happen. Stuff just went wrong. We are still planning on being able to move. Like it's not as though we're never going to move or anything drastic has happened. There's just been a lot of delays. So we are hoping to get to move. So I have a lot of my stuff packed up behind the camera. There are boxes stacked full of dolls that I started to pack up because I thought we were going to be moving literally months ago. So I don't have my whole collection out. Nothing is organized or displayed the way that I would like for it to be right now. So I have a ton of videos that I want to do once we're able to move and a new doll collection tour is one of them. I promise it's going to be coming as soon as it can. Uh, just we keep getting delayed and I don't want to like unpack just to then repack, you know? Um, so it will happen eventually. I promise. There were a lot of parts of this question and I'm forgetting. Uh, Holy Grail dolls. Oh my goodness. Um, first one that comes to mind is the SDCC Cleo doll, the one that came in a pack with Gulia. I'm sorry if you're a Gulia stan, that's fantastic. I'm just not. I could care less about getting the Gulia. The Cleo is exquisite and I love her and she's so beautiful. I would love, love, love to have that doll. Other Grail dolls are my Dawn of the Dance Laguna. I'm never gonna stop talking about her. I'm trying to think if there's any others. Those are the only ones that I can think of right now. I'm sure there are more, but I feel like whenever I'm asked a question, my mind just disappears. So I'm sorry. <laughs> those are like only two out of what are probably a lot more grail dolls, but those are the two I can think of. Um, know more about yourself again. I don't know. There's nothing in here right now. I'm trying to answer these questions and it's like the old scene from SpongeBob, like frantically searching through the filing cabinets of your brain. Like where's the information? It's nowhere. Um, about myself. I love cats. I already established that. I really, really, really love cats. I like history. For anyone who's into astrology, I was born on the first day of Taurus, so I'm like an Aries Taurus cusp, and I feel like I have a lot of leftover Aries energy. I'm not necessarily very good at it, but I do enjoy certain video games. Love Animal Crossing. I have an embarrassing amount of hours in that. Um, love The Witcher. The Mass Effect series was amazing. I also liked Andromeda. I know it's a controversial opinion. Is it bad that that's all I can think of about myself? <laughs> Like, I know that there is more to me, but I feel like I just can't access that information or I don't know what it is. I am, I feel like I'm doing so bad at this q and I'm sorry. I'm not used to talking about myself. And the last part of that question was favorite doll line or doll. I've talked a lot about specific dolls. Um, 
Favorite doll line is definitely Monster High, 100% of the time. Within that, I mentioned Dawn of the Dance. I also really like G3, like the G3 core dolls have definitely risen to like some of my top favorite Monster High dolls, which I know can be controversial for some people, but I just, I like them a lot. Alrighty, next we have, if you can time travel to only one specific year, like 2010 or 2014, to buy Monster High dolls, which year would you choose? That's hard. Um, I feel like in general, the lines that I missed out on the most are kind of the earlier ones. So I would say maybe 2011, so that they've had like a solid year of being out. But it is really mostly the super early ones that I missed out on. So I think, yeah, it'd have to be 2011, maybe 2012 if I was pushing it, trying to get some of the older ones on like clearance or secondhand, like right after they came out. Um, but probably 2011 is like a safer bet for me. <laughs> okay, and then this is a great one to round out the Q&A on. I'd like to know what got you started in doll collecting, how long you've been a collector for. So time is an illusion for me and I cannot remember exactly what year it was, but I did mention earlier that Spectra was the first doll that ever like really caught my eye and really got me into collecting. I had dolls as a kid. It was something that my parents were like chill with because I was growing up as a girl. Um, so I did have like Barbies and Bratz as a kid, but I got rid of all of those when I kind of entered my teen years. And then when Monster High came out, I was interested in them, but I was kind of ashamed. Like I had internalized a lot of that, you're too old for dolls rhetoric. And so I was ashamed. Like I, I didn't want to admit to myself that I wanted dolls or especially to anybody else that I wanted dolls. Cause as a teenager, like my parents kind of knew what was going on and I didn't want them to think that I was dumb. Um, cause again, I was just, I was insecure. I was a lot more insecure back then, but Spectra, I saw a picture of her and was like, I, I have to have her. That was probably, I think that was maybe the year before I could drive or maybe the year I could drive. So I was like 15 or 16, somewhere in there. And I ended up getting Venus before I got Spectra, but Spectra was the whole reason that I wanted to buy dolls. So Monster High in general is what got me started doll collecting. Uh, however, once they tapered off, like after G2 ended, I did stop collecting for a while and I only got back into it when Rainbow High came out. So if you're including the gap time, I've been a collector for like a decade now. If you're not including the time when I wasn't actively buying dolls, then I probably cumulatively have been collecting for five or six years. Does that math add up? Somewhere in there. Either way, it's, it's been several years that I've been collecting um, and Monster High will always be my first love because that was the brand that got me started. Rainbow High also means a lot to me because it got me restarted into doll collecting. <laughs> okay, I think that is all the questions. If I missed yours, I promise it's unintentional. I just like was going through a bunch of different places trying to get through them all. So if I missed anything, let me know in the comments down below and I will just answer you in the comments. Uh, but this was a little bit weird for me, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not used to talking about myself. Even if I'm not like actively unboxing a doll, I'm always talking about dolls here. So I feel like I always feel a little bit weirder when I'm talking about myself, but I hope it was interesting for you guys. I hope that I answered all the questions that you were curious about. Um, and yeah, just thank you again. I know, I feel like it sounds so empty coming across the internet. I wish you could just like be here, all 5,000 plus of you so that I could tell you, really, thank you so much, but all I can do is the camera. So I hope you get it. Um, I hope you understand. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day or your night or whatever it might be, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.